Somebody who's trying to speak up for the 79th Assembly District here in New York in the Bronx, Dion Powell, joins us right now. He's a Democratic candidate, um, executive director of governmental affairs and public relations for ca political campaign training company Special Forces. Dion, thanks for giving us a few minutes here. Um, one of the things, uh, you know, you and I probably come down on different sides of the spectrum politically. I'm socially liberal, but fiscally I'm conservative. And um, But one of the things that I bet we agree on is that, uh, that we can't let them hijack our fundamental democracy by going right. to mail-in voting. That, to me, I'm an Italian guy from Staten Island. I know the street side of life. I know, I know the office side of life. And you start putting everybody's things in their mailbox, and clever people can do clever things, if you ask me. Yes, John. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, basically, I am a conservative on the conservative line for the for the uh, general election this year. Um, I'm also from the Bronx, thanks to the Bronx Surrey Party, um, rest in late, late Bill Newmark. Also, I helped start the Bronx Libertarian Party chapter. So my ideology is all over the place. But the reason why I'm on a Democratic primary is because my grandmother made me a lifelong Democrat and shows my bank and other things is that it's the only way to win the Bronx, right? We're the most bluest county in America per capita, but we're, we're the poorest county, and people can't see the correlation. But today, John, I want to talk about the voter mail-in ballot fraud. That's Wait, hang on. I, I just want to ask you something, because I love, I, I'm loving you even more now that I know you're on the conservative line, you're also libertarian. So you did a little, I got, I know some, some ground-level political maneuvers. You did a little... Uh, the fox and sheep's clothing over there and got on the D-line on top of everything else. I love it. All right. That's right. Um, tell me about mail-in voting because I've been at war, just so you know. I have been in a personal one-man war for the last 15 years against one person, Stephen Richmond, attorney for the New York City Board of Elections, yes. one of the most corrupt, awful enemies of democracy I have ever met in my entire life. He's a bum, and he basically takes the political life of people into his own hands constantly. Give me something good so I could join you in going after them. You know, as we say in my culture, God is good, and it's funny you should say that, because I was taken to court yesterday virtually on Skype with Mr. Richmond and somebody, maybe you heard of Mr. Stanley Schlein, or Stanley Schlein here in the Bronx, yeah. our Bronx County um, attorney, because as a candidate... They're trying to prove that there is not any absentee ballot, mail-in ballot fraud, right? And so what me as a responded, you know, we're trying to tell, listen, Stanley Schlein is actually actively involved in the Board of Elections now where they're going to be counting these mail-in absentee ballots, right? Also, my opponent, female district leader Cynthia Cox, she's heavily involved in the Board of Elections because people don't know that district leaders actually positioned the poll workers and site coordinators in the board of elections. So, of course, they can have a hand in any kind of corruption whatsoever, right? But to the issue of mail-in ballots here in New York City's primary. So back to your point, a lot of people understand they don't know how it works in the South Bronx because they keep us so poor, dependent, and dumb. For example, a lot of people don't know AOC, Trump, Bloomberg, and Bernie Sanders aren't Democrats, right? And then they can switch parties. So here's the corruption part. With the absentee voter ballot, it's a process called ballot harvesting. All the candidates for Congress, AOC, and our big contestant crusher list, the 15th, are doing it. What they do is they take the absentee ballot application door to door, have people fill it out, take it back to the Board of Election, and bring them back their ballot. But here's the corruption part of it. For example, a lot of dead people can do this too, because if you have the same system of voter access, you can actually forge signatures. All right? Also, think about it. Immigrants can vote now, too. Also, people can actually double dip. So, for example, you get somebody to vote for you by absentee mail-in ballot, but if they physically go to the polling site and they vote differently from what they gave you, that's a big red flag that the board hasn't um, accounted for, in my opinion. And also, we have people that have moved out of the district. Because they're on the roll, what they could do is take the information on the roll, have them vote a certain way, and they wouldn't know because they're no longer in the district. So there's a whole bunch of standings that the president and the Department of Justice, William Barr, need to be put on that radar. That's going I'm, on here. I'm going to do a little inside baseball with you, okay? Um, and I want to reiterate that Steve Richmond is the enemy of democracy 
and he hijacked the Board of Elections for probably the last 20 years with fake rulings and fake legis right. fake legal opinions and everything else. And as long as they get five, as long as they get one random from the other side, they all go with Richmond. I, I, I it's so sickening. The, when I see him in the street downtown, I stop, I look him in the face, and I go, Steve, you're a bum. And I'm saying it right now on my national TV show, too, because he is. But the other day, I went to vote, okay, like I always do. And uh, there was a uh, primary election Republican. I'm an independent. I'm not registered in a party because I was in the Reform Party, okay, and the Reform right. Party disbanded. So I went to vote. Um, just to see if there was anything. I don't know what I even am anymore. They said I'm supposed to revert back to Republican, right? Because I was a Republican right. before that. But uh, I went in and I asked for a ballot. They said, well, uh, what's your address? I gave them my address. And they said, no, we don't have you at that, that, that address, Mr. Tobacco. I said, I lived there for 30 years. It's been my same address, right? Benedict. Now, my ex-wife moved to another address near here, okay, outside of this district. And they had me registered at her address, okay, and they had me registered in the SAM party because they gave me a ballot for a state executive committee primary in the SAM party, which I never even joined the SAM party. Yes, I can speak on that too. But I said, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe a, I went out after work and had a few cocktails and somebody got me to sign a, a SAM registration form. I don't remember, but they gave me the ballot, right? So I voted. And then it said, what party are you in? I said, other. I don't think I'm in a, a party, right? I bet you that vote gets counted in the SAM. And I don't know if you saw, but Mike Ryan is also probably one of the worst administrators of a board of elections I've seen in the <laughs> last 20 years. And I think there were like a thousand votes in the SAM state committee vote. And there's only like 400 SAM members in the whole state. So tell me how that happens. Well, that's interesting because I was at the SAM kickoff, SAM New York, when they first uh, got their line after the gubernatorial election. And that's been happening a lot, right? I tried to get their line uh, for the general as well. But a lot of people can vote in that primary that are not eligible. Another case in point here, we had an entire slate um, taken off the ballot because they weren't in petition compliance. But because of Cuomo's executive order, they were back on the ballot, right? But the Board of Elections forgot to add them onto the rolls for voting. So now people are voting for people that don't exist, right? There's a whole bunch of snaggings. But get this, we have an assemblywoman named Carmen Arroyo here that was knocked off the ballot and incumbent for decades. And also you have Miss Seawright that was knocked off the ballot for not compliance for petitions. But once again, Cuomo signed an executive order so they both can get back on the ballot and create their own party line. If they get a thousand signatures from any party, right? So now yeah. Seawright and Aurora incumbents have a chance at the general election to get back on the ballot because Cuomo's executive order. So this governor does whatever he wants in these elections, and our democracy is now out the window. No doubt so, about it. I um I know some of the guys that are uh, have just joined the Sam Party. Actually, some of my teammates here on the production team joined the Sam Party, and um, I'm hoping that. I was at that same event as you upstairs in Midtown somewhere. Yeah, I was there, Curtis. Yeah, Lord, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kurt, I was with Curtis and Frank, and uh, um, Frank's now on the state committee and a number of other people that Frank recruited. I'm hoping that the SAM party can be one of these sane, level-headed parties in between all the wackiness. Um, and look, I, Dion, we only had a minute left, but I want to have you back. Oh, we have 30 seconds left. Yes, please. I believe, and I've been doing an investigation for almost a year now because I have, you know, serious technology background. I believe that the Board of Elections under Steve Richmond and Mike Ryan knows how to use the scanners to determine who a person Correct. voted for. And I think that's one of the biggest scandals ever in BOE history. Maybe we got to look into that together. Yes, sir. All right. Dion Powell, candidate for uh, assembly in the 79th district in the Bronx. Speaking the truth. Thank you, my friend. We'll have you back soon. Thank you, Mr. Tobacco. Coming back at you right after this for a little more liquid lunch.